Good morning. I'm Mike Neal, President and CEO of the Tulsa Regional Chamber. Uh, welcome to uh, episode 10 of our Chamber's Business Support Series um, webinar. Uh, this, this webinar is entitled The Future of Work. Uh, our Business Support Series offers insights as to how your organization can effectively respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, it's an area where the Chamber uh, can be of assistance. Uh, we want you to let us know. If there's anything at all that we can do, our staff can do to assist you or your companies, please let us know. Our conversation today will look forward uh, to the post-pandemic workforce. Uh, many jobs and entire industry clusters will change as we recover uh, from unprecedented unemployment uh, brought on by the pandemic. Uh, when combined with pre-existing uh, forces like automation and artificial intelligence, uh, the pandemic recovery uh, will only accelerate an evolution of our economy. Today we'll explore what it looks like and how businesses can respond accordingly. If you've joined via the video link, uh, you'll be able to follow along with our uh, speaker slides. If you've joined by phone, uh, the slides will be posted uh, on our Chamber's website uh, later this afternoon. But before we get to our speakers, I'd like to take this opportunity uh, to thank our sponsors of our entire business support series. Uh, they are Expert Ready, Luxa Enterprises, Stride Bank, and Security Bank. And speaking of Security Bank, uh, we're pleased to have with us Eric Boney, President and CEO for Security Bank. And I'll pass it over to Eric to introduce today's speakers. Eric? Thank you, Mike. Uh, it's an honor to join everyone today and introduce our speakers. Uh, Barbara Endell is a senior advisor to the National Nonprofit Jobs for the Future, which specializes in systems building and strategy for innovation in adult education and workforce development. Dr. Endell has worked with states, colleges, and adult education programs across the country to support the capacity of institutional leaders to engage in the hard work of change. Sabrina Ware is Tulsa Works Director for Goodwill Industries of Tulsa. She has been with Goodwill for more than 35 years and leads Goodwill Career Preparation Academy, which trains and educates people to enter the workforce. Thank you both for joining us today. I'll now let each of you share some of your experiences and insights on the changing workforce, uh, starting with Barbara. Great, Eric, thank you so much. So I'm Barbara Endel and so pleased to join you today. I've had the honor of working with the Tulsa Chamber for the last three years, and I wanna do a shout out to the smartest, most capable professional I know, Kuma Roberts, who's <laughs> a vice president of diversity, equity and inclusion. Tulsa is actually one of 26 communities across the country uh, called talent, a talent hub. This is supported by Lumina Foundation. Tulsa's Talent Hub is specifically focused on building systems and partnerships, especially to help the city's adults who don't have a post-secondary credential get the opportunity for training. So in my brief opening remarks today, I'm so excited to share just a few things. The first is uh, information sharing. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the future of work and the dynamics about job change that have kind of slowly crept up on us, but that are no less important. I'll talk a little bit about COVID-19, but really, really supporting your thinking post-pandemic. I've got a few stats around Tulsa and what the changing economies are gonna look like and how that skills were gonna look in a, speci a specific skill I'd love to elevate and bring to your attention. And then last, just some practical tips. So on the next slide, I'd like to show you then what our workforce dynamics are turning into looking like. So here um, is something I've, I've just always been struck by when I look at these charts, where when we look at the old economy, where that one dose of education or training generally worked to get you through the arc of your career, and then you would retire. But the reality is that workers entering the job market today are likely to have 17 different jobs across five different sectors. So I'll let that sink in for a minute. 17 jobs against around five different sectors. 
and people are living longer. So there are also some projections around people staying in the economy longer as we progress through time. So when we look at the bottom part here on the new economy, I want to just draw your attention to what I think is one of the most important things as businesses and employers need to look to the future of work instead of hiring employees that might have that one thing that you might need, what we're gonna to continue to see and what you're likely seeing now is this in and out of education and training and the constant need over the full arc of your career as both workers and employers to ensure that the shelf life of the skills is gonna be shorter we know and that you're able to keep up. There's been the emergence of what we're calling growth mindset so that when you look at workers that have these 17 different jobs over five different sectors, it's less about the actual technical skills and more about having a growth mindset with having workers and a business able to adapt to this future of work that will be a lot um, more rapid in coming and the changes in skill sets definitely more coming. So what I'd like to draw your attention to then in the next slide is um, a little bit about uh, preparing for recovery efforts. And I'll, I'm couching this in our COVID-19 information, but really this sets up the next conversation about how skills are changing. Um, obviously, we can't think about the future of work unless we think about the immediate impact of COVID-19. And it's a challenging outlook for sure. I mean, some economists are still projecting millions more that will be unemployed over the next three to five weeks. But the way to consider, to think about the pandemic is to use the information and the power of the networks like the Tulsa Chamber, like talent hubs to help manage this as proactively as we can. What you can see here, this is a really great report from the Brookings Institution. The five most vulnerable industries are mining, transportation, employment, and you can see, uh, um, and so forth. And if you then look at the chart across the country, uh, the bubble size reflects the number of jobs that are at higher risk across these industries. I mean, so it's no mistake, you've got some of the higher populated areas at most risk, but I'll get to Tulsa here in a quick second. It is really gonna impact almost everyone as you well know. So when I look at related data for Tulsa really quickly, what I'm finding is 18% of the jobs in the Tulsa metro area are at risk. That puts Tulsa at a rank of 86th out of the 382 metro areas across the country. So I'll let that sink in a minute. Tulsa's 86th, 18% of the jobs are at risk, and that's 86 out of 300 metro areas. So Tulsa is going to be in the top third. For perspective, places like Las Vegas have 33% of their jobs at risk, and they're ranked fourth. So um, this is then all about tying in how are we going to deal with the flux and the dynamics of these jobs that are at risk and again approaching this work with a sense of flexible flexibility agility and embrace the accelerated changes with a growth mindset so what i'd like to uh, focus on next on the next slide is then um, what should we be asking businesses to think about around this future of work and I love this slide a lot because it, it's really future oriented and talks about and shows you how will our workforce skills shift. So for me, I feel like the questions we need to ask is, um, where are the root, the root things we can look at? And when we look here at the things that are in the orange, the structural changes, and you look at the very top around mindset, mindset shift, look what you see basically instituting a culture of lifelong learning and providing training opportunities for employees, organizational setup, et cetera. That's what I just think is so important as we think about the dynamics of COVID-19 and moving forward. And when we get to some of our questions, I think that we've been able to look at before, I'll talk a little bit more about how can businesses find the skills that they need but you can quickly glance here on the, in the blue on the retraining, the redeployment, et cetera, to find this. So um, I think that when, employees, when employers look to find employees, there are great organizations and talented places like Tulsa Tech and Tulsa Community College and your four-year college partners. 
but we know with the influx of more millions of, employer, of employees, we're gonna need a broader network. And that includes co uh, community-based organizations that will add to the capacity to train the workers with the skills you're going to need for the future, like Goodwill. So with that, uh, Eric and team, I will turn uh, the floor over to my wonderful growth mindset colleague, Sabrina Ware. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Mike and um, Eric. I appreciate it. I'm sorry not able to join you by video, but I am here and Tulsa Works and Goodwill Industries of Tulsa is here. Uh, shout out to my friend Kuma Roberts for making this uh, possible. Um, we need to make sure that as we talk about where we are as a city, as a world, um, and what COVID has done to us, we need to make sure that our employers are thinking in a bright, bright, broader way. And so what we want to make sure that you, the Tulsa employers understand that Goodwill Tulsa is not your grandma's Tulsa. It's not your grandma's goodwill. What we're doing is that we have in-demand training programs that could be right there for our employees who are gonna be looking for a job uh, when COVID is over as COVID ends. So let's talk about what Goodwill Tulsa has to offer. First of all, we offer, um, and the next slide, we offer uh, our digital training programs. So we teach IT fundamentals and IT computer support tech training, namely our Google IT computer support professional. What that does is that we're teaching tier one support. So we're teaching in-demand occupations for a right now employee. In the Google IT support professional credential, we're teaching, uh, they're learning about software, Learn learning about infrastructure. They're learning to become an employee with the tier one support positions. The, the next slide, uh, we also talk about work, workplace computer skills training. So we're gonna be teaching um, an employee exactly, or a person that's looking for work, Microsoft Office system. So Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, and also the Google Suite. Next slide. The other industries that we teach is hospitality training. So there are four components within our hospitality training that we teach, which is the front desk, the guest room attendant, the bank root, banquet server, and also the intro to management. And if you think about it, uh, food service, the hotels, these are gonna be some, and retail, these are gonna be some of the hard hit industries. And so while a person maybe is out of work, uh, maybe they're furloughed, furloughed or uh, laid off. We need to make sure that uh, folks understand that Goodwill Industries is right here for them and take, they can take a short-term training program and get the credential that we need. As Barbara said, we're talking about stackable credentials. So they're not only prepared to work, but they're qualified to work. Next slide. We also offer unarmed private security training. In the state of Oklahoma, you must be CLEAT certified to work in this particular industry. What CLEAT means is that's the Council on Law Enforcement and Training. So you must hold a license to work security. So what we do, it is our unarmed private security training program and we teach this particular program and the evening time. Um, so we, uh, this is a two week training program taught by um, Sheriff support, the, the Sheriff Department here of Goodwill Industry, the Sheriff Department of Tulsa, and uh, these guys were retired Sheriff Department workers, and they're teaching our unarmed private security training program right here in our building. And what we're looking at is going virtual with all of our training programs. So not only will be able to do it when COVID over, when COVID is over, they can come into our program, but they'll also will be able to do it virtually, and that's what we're working on. Next slide. One thing that would be very difficult to do virtually would be our forklift training, because like driving a car, you certainly can't do that um, sitting in a virtual seat. So that would be our hard press forklift training program and we teach people how to drive different vehicles. So uh, things like the stand up, the electric, the lift truck, um, but because 
we are getting ready to just flip all of our training classes to virtual, there is going to be a new component that we're adding to our virtual training program for forklift, where they're going to be teaching um, learning on an order picker, but they're doing it through a uh, virtual means, much like uh, a person would do it on a um, uh, playing a video game, but what they're going to be doing is sitting in a virtual seat and learning how to actually uh, do and uh, operate the order picker. But because we make sure that we're doing things on OSHA training standards, uh, they will have to come in when COVID is over and make sure that they can do it and, do, and drive, the, drive the vehicle safely. So these are our training programs that we offer at Goodwill Goodwill Industries of Tulsa. One thing though that you need to also understand, we also offer something called job connection. Before COVID, you could come in and you could see the postings that are on our board of all the different job postings in the city of Tulsa and their surrounding areas. Now that COVID is here, we flipped that and now we offer a virtual job board for any job seeker that is looking for employment. They can go onto our website right now today and look to see what kind of jobs are open in the city of Tulsa. And you as an employer, you can go on our site and you can click on that and you can ask that your job postings, make sure that your job postings are featured there. So we're happy to be able to be um, uh, there for the city of Tulsa for not only the job seeker, but for the employer. Barbara and uh, Sabrina, thank you both uh, so very much. We'll not be able to take live questions uh, on this call, uh, but we do have some questions that were submitted uh, in advance uh, that we will begin with our speakers and cover for about the next uh, 15 minutes. Uh, and that is the first one, ladies, that is, what lessons have we learned from unemployment spikes during previous economic downturns that could possibly be applicable today? Barbara? Yep, thank you. Um, you know, it may not feel like it, but downturns can be opportunities. So what we typically see and what we've learned from the 2008 through 2010 recession is what we call counter-cyclical enrollments. So what may likely happen now as we think about um, the dynamics of the, the job market is Tulsa labor force will hopefully be seeking ways to upgrade their skills and become marketable, knowing we've got many sorts of jobs that with folks that have been laid off and unemployed. So I think what we've learned is that employers um, should encourage upskilling if they have folks that are still remaining in their labor force, but also it's a time um, especially what we saw after the recession, to really redefine what, you're, what kind of work you're looking for and make those skills explicit. What I would add to that is that as you're defining that, if you need some assistance in doing that, Goodwill Tulsa and our Tulsa Works Career Academy offer career navigators. That's that person that will walk them through the journey of finding out what, what are my interests. We have assessments that we can run to see exactly what your skill sets are. And then we offer these credentials, these national credentials that are in demand occupations that we offer here and we'll guide you through that and then also help you find not only just a job, but a career in this. And I think as employers, what you need to know as you're helping your employees um, keep their training up and keep their skill sets up, we're here for you too. Your employees could come and take advantage of these programs as well. Barbara, in your presentation, you mentioned that 18% uh, uh, of the jobs in the Tulsa region are at risk and that we're basically in the top 25% of metro areas that, that are at risk. So let's chat a little more specifically about that, if we could, and talk about which industries or sectors do you think are most susceptible uh, to long-term fundamental changes as a result of this pandemic crisis? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, well, we know that the, with the data that we saw that the, the sectors that I listed there, like transportation, distribution, and logistics, the oil, gas, and production industry, hospitality, and travel, like all just immediately impact. Mm -hmm. and, and what we've also heard is, um, you know, I mean, it's, the impact is just immense. Um, and so we also know it didn't make the list, but it's likely to be number six, but retail has really been changing a lot, even before COVID-19, where I think many of those jobs are disappearing and may never come back. So I think for me, when we think about the sectors that are most, most susceptible, 
when, when, we, when we try to support employers, I think the real question for employers is, how can you think about cross-training your current workforce to pivot when the sectors are fundamentally changing so that you can really think about transferable skills with your current workers and more ably define what skills you might need coming up. Um, there's lots of success stories about folks that um, have, you know, might have had be part of an industry now, but they're able to find some opportunity to remake what they've been manufacturing that's now in demand or think about ways to offer services that are more virtual. So those are the kinds of the kinds of things I think I think about a lot. Thank you, Barbara. Sabrina, would you like to add anything to that? I would. I agree with what Barbara is saying. I think what we also have to think about is uh, the food industry, the restaurant servers, mm -hmm. all of those hospitality, those are definitely going to be and have been affected. But I think also um, it's all about being a little, a lot more agile, a lot more open to um, making sure that your employees are getting the stackable credentials that they need to be not only just prepared, but qualified for the change. And what we're understanding now, the change has to come quickly. So they need to find short term type of training programs such like ours. Our programs are two weeks, some of them are four weeks, but it's going to be short enough so they can get the opportunities that they need to also get the, the kind of job and the career that they need and have. To, uh, to be more viable in this city, in this community. Thank you, Sabrina. Um, what will happen, uh, we've pinpointed, Barbara pinpointed uh, those five uh, industry sectors, if you will, and mm -hmm. she you tell is number six. So my question is really, what will happen to people who lost their jobs in those sectors? Uh, and so what new skills should they acquire uh, to increase their uh, employment prospects? They look to the future. Uh, what I what we believe it would, would be just handy and what they need to have right now is how are their skill sets? Do they know what their abilities are to work in Microsoft Office or in Google? Uh, are they able to and agile enough to go through that? Also, just things like job interviewing skills. Um, their soft skills, these are the things that actually help people to lose a job. So while they're unemployed or furloughed, uh, these are the times to get into programs such as ours so that we can assist them with these kinds of things. Um, and if they are working, then we're we want to also offer credentials that will help them move forward. So take the time now, uh, because these classes are virtual and they're moving toward that, take the time now to look at those virtual job boards so that you'll find yourself to be prepared and qualified to do the next step. Thank you, Sabrina. Barbara? Yeah, I guess um, I think Sabrina is absolutely right. And I also think it's like we need an all hands on deck in Tulsa because mm -hmm. there'll be the influx of unemployed is just going to be huge, which is why I think there's such a pivotal role for the chamber, for the Tulsa Talent Hub work, and for the many terrific organizations like Tulsa Community Work Advance to what I call like smart uh, reconnection to the labor force. And I think that there's a role to play as Sabrina mentioned around the employees and the workers who are looking for work with the things they can do to upgrade their skills. But I also think that there's a role to play for us as a system of businesses and workforce development organizations um, to essentially try to figure out what are the skills and the jobs that are gonna be needed that are gonna be in demand and help people not just rapidly reconnect to jobs that are gonna be still at risk, but how do we take the Tulsa economy into that next step, into that future of work more readily? And that could be something we could help follow with, you know, really kind of post uh, this event uh, to think about what elements we could help you put in place for that local sort of smart reconnection initiative. You know, Mike, we are partners in all of this. This workforce, Tulsa, is very, a very unique town in that um, all of our partners work together, the workforce partners, so that we can be a tighter and a better place for employers. And so the camaraderie that happens in the city of Tulsa throughout all of our Tulsa Community College, Tulsa Tech, uh, work, Tulsa Work Advance, we're all partnering together. And I think that's good news, despite what's going on with COVID. It still is great news. Right. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Sabrina. Um, where should businesses look for talent as they try to pivot to new strategies uh, that require new skills? 
Well, obviously, I'm going to look at our community. Um, Barbara already talked about uh, the, the, the regular ones, the ones that you probably look through the colleges. Um, you're looking at the uh, communities, colleges, and things in Tulsa Tech. But I also am asking that it would, might be best for to look broader to seeing what these nonprofits, such as Goodwill Industries of Tulsa, has to offer. Uh, check, a, check us out. As I said, we're not our, your grandmother's goodwill. And so being able to offer these credentials, these national in-demand credentials, so that you can check us out to make sure that we are be able, we're able to talk with our businesses. We have business advisory councils. So we're uh, on the front lines to uh, trying to understand what is it that businesses need? What is it that Mr. J um, employer needs so that they'll have a better candidate? Well, when you work with the uh, Goodwill Industries of Tulsa, we have been out there talking to those employers, finding out their needs, and then making our curriculum around that. That way, we're going to able to match up a better candidate, a more qualified candidate to that employer. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Barbara, anything else from your perspective there? Mike, I think Sabrina said it so well. I don't think I could build on anything she said. That was an awesome answer. <laughs> Great. Um, um, uh, we're, we're running a little short of time, so we will, we will pivot, and I will pass over to Eric Boney to ask our final question. Eric? Uh, thanks, Mike. Uh, the uh, information has been very valuable, especially the uh, the. Uh, things that the uh, Goodwill Preparation Academy offers. Uh, my question is, uh, what effects is anticipated on the social skills and social habits that we have all developed in the workforce and social interaction? Uh, I perceive that there is going to be an impact dramatically in that, in the way people relate. How, what effect is that going to have in the workforce? I'm sort of uh, processing this really, really great question. Um, you know, I think the heightened awareness of the sort of connection points we are making as a community, as folks who care about jobs in our local economy will just get stronger. And I guess for me, my, my thought is, um, if anything, this elevates around our connection points, the ability for us to pivot and be flexible and agile and for employers to really think about this growth mindset and try to find ways to make that more explicit in the job descriptions, in employer pro employee profiles, in making promotions, because I think that's going to help this, that's bringing more attention to what we're sort of doing now, but help lift that up to make it a more permanent place in our economy. And as we think about the future of work, Eric, that's, that's kind of where I would love us to be thinking about. That's how I think we've had a lot more awareness about our connection points and our flexibility as people. Well said, Barbara. What only thing that I could add to that to answer your question, Eric, is that Goodwill's had a saying for a long time that we believe in the power of work. We believed in it before COVID and we're believing in it now as we deal with COVID. And we know that the power of work will change lives. And so here at Goodwill and, has, and then working in the city of Tulsa, we're gonna be there for you, the employer. And we're going to be there and have been there for you, the employee, um, and those who are also working for, looking for work. And so as we deal with these social changes, those career navigators that we have will help you with those to find the resources, to find the facts of how to deal with this, and yet still have the power of work to, so that they can be independent, career-minded folks. Hey, Barbara and Sabrina, thank you. One quick, uh, quick question I'd like to add on to Eric's and ask you to take 30 seconds, 20 seconds. 30 seconds of, of each to, to answer. And that is, and that is really the biggest surprise to me during this entire COVID pandemic, uh, certainly this past month, has been in talking to our members and has been how effective our staffs have been. Our staff has done an amazing job working remotely at the, here at the chamber. And every business that I talk to, small, medium, or large, are telling me if they have a remote workforce, how astounded they are and how productive that, that is. What, what do you think remote workforces will, how will that change in the future? 30 seconds each. Um, Sabrina, do you mind if I jump in? I, I always no. love it if you have the last word because you're way smart. Um, <laughs> I think that the, um, 
the, I uh, totally agree, Mike, around sort of like, it's, an, it's Tulsa and, and other communities have had this national rallying cry around, what are we, what's it gonna take to keep it going? And so I think that for both um, folks that are looking for work and employers that are looking to deal and address COVID-19 and beyond, it's this mastery of technology. So making sure that's part of your training as an employer and if you're seeking skills going to places in Tulsa that will help you stay current with that mastery of technology skills. That'll only help grow both your ability to work when we have these sorts of things and contribute to um, a, a growth beyond COVID-19. Thanks, Barbara. 30 seconds, Sabrina. Well said, and I will just say ditto on the mastery of, te of technology. We've had to learn it quickly for those of uh, folks that had issues with that and we're working from home and we're making it work. Again, that speaks to the resiliency of Tulsa and who we are as a city. Uh, our mayor says it best where, where resiliency is a big deal here and it's across the country. So we're, gonna pr we're going to definitely survive and, and, and thrive. So I'm just excited about where the future takes us. And ladies, if, if, if I can master all this remote stuff and this technology, <laughs> anybody can. I yes, sir. Amen. Again, Amen to that. <laughs> please uh, join me in thanking Barbara and Sabrina and Eric for joining us today. Also, I'd like to thank Security Bank, Expert Ready, Lux Enterprises, and Stride Bank uh, for their support of this series. To anyone that called in late uh, or joined, joined via the, the webinar late, uh, a recording with our speaker slides will be posted on the Chamber's website later this afternoon. Please feel free to share those with anybody. Uh, our next business support series webinar will be next Tuesday, April the 21st, from 11 to 1130. Uh, we'll focus on the tough decisions that business owners and managers must make to ensure the future of their organizations. Uh, you can register online uh, at, at TulsaChamber.com slash events. In the meantime, please don't hesitate to reach out to the Chamber staff. You can call me directly at 918-409-1732 or email me at mikeneal at tulsachamber.com if we can be of assistance to you or your business in any fashion. Again, thank you for being with us today. Uh, have a great afternoon uh, and a great weekend. Thanks so much. See you next week.